Frazier almost drowned one year in the games. Oh, shit. Like literally? Yeah. Yeah, no. So part of it was is that they would come over and we wouldn't talk about CrossFit because there was always so much other talk about that, you know, all the time, the undertones. And, and I need a break. I need a break from that. And so Matt was, Matt's smart. Do you know he has two degrees? I, I've heard. Yeah, yeah I no, he's got that. an engineering and a business degree. No, that's wow. the thing is he is a smart person. And so part of it is, is it's interesting. The people at the top, they're very educated. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a coincidence, but they're all very educated. Mm -hmm. And that's why I get along with it, because I could talk about mm -hmm. very complicated things and they're tracking in their head what I'm saying. Like one of the things, Frazier almost drowned one year in the games. Oh, shit. Like literally? Yeah. So wow. there was an event, a run, swim, run, and it was in 20, the, you should pull up the run, swim, run event in 20, what year was that? 17? I just want to look at these cookies. Was it 18, Hyde? Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, the, so the CrossFit Games, CrossFit Games, uh, 2017 Run Swim Run event. I'll check it out. So Fraser gets into the water. It was a 1.5 mile run into a 500 meter swim and a 1.5 mile run. And we already knew what kind of pacing he could hold for the 1.5. So the, the practice when it got announced, we were going to lock in muscle memory for the 1.5, which was a 520 to a 540 mile pace. And then the swim, he was about a 136 per 100 meter pace. And then the closing one and a half miles was between 540 and six minutes. So mm -hmm. there's your target. And we locked in that muscle memory. Perfect. Enters the water first. And one of the things that people don't understand, when you are running and you get into the water, you recover significantly faster by being prone. Mm. And so I told him, I said, hit the water and be gassed. Make sure you're out in front, which he did it. Like he's a soldier. So he hits the water. And what you have to do is you had to swim. Remember, it was 500 meters. You have to swim basically diagonal to the shore, round a buoy, and then out. You'll pass the buoy. You'll be on your left. And now what you're going to do is swim across the original starting spot, parallel to the shore, hit a second buoy, and then come back to the boat ramp and be done. He passes the first buoys and in first place, he starts getting passed as they're going down the long straightaway by the faster swimmers. So as a response, you know what he does? He drops in behind them and drafts because mm -hmm. it's 20 plus percent easier being number two, mm -hmm. which means that you can go 20% faster or if you're the same speed, just save 20% of your energy. That's what he's learned. And so one of the things that he, he had to do though is he had to accelerate his kick because the person was more than 20% faster. Mm. And when he did that, next thing you know, Brent Fikowski, which was one of the podium finishers that year, grabs him and pulls him because he was bobbing in the water. Wow. He was going to drown. Damn. Oh, there you go. You got it. Well done. Yeah, it, yeah this one's not necessarily focusing on Matt Fraser, but... Well, if you found the, if you found the event... It. No, they didn't. Mm. They, when he got into the water, they didn't focus. But what, what happened was, is he's going around and he, he has to collect himself, does a little bit of breaststroke, rounds the second buoy and then swims in. And I think he finished fifth that year. And um, here it was, he almost dies in an event, yet he finishes fifth. Mm. And so part is, is that you have to diagnose like what happened? What happened to him in that? Well, what happened was what I said is he accelerated his kick and because he didn't have the aerobic capacity in the kick, his legs consumed all of that mm. oxygen. And I learned something that year. I learned that if you run and you get tired, you could stop. But if you swim and you get tired, you die. Mm. I didn't know that coming from a swimming background. I thought that anybody could just float, but that's not the case. So we had to teach him how to swim slow. And, and that was number one. But number two was what happened? And that was his legs lacked the aerobic capacity. We had to develop, even though his running, he could run a 505 mile, that doesn't mean that you could have a good kick. Mm -hmm. So what we did was, and Matt was really funny about it, we did workouts that were kicking with long fins, short fins, and no fins. We were doing you know 2,000 meters of that. And Matt would always say, that just so we are clear, that's just filler distance. That's not actual swimming. Like he didn't consider it swimming. Mm. But one of the things that it did was it highlighted what was his weakness within the kick. So as we're swimming in these workouts side by side, we were kicking and he says, your hip flexors hurt? And I'm all, no, because of course I have the capacity. I've been swimming for a long time. 
He's like, I can't swim anymore. I, my, my hip flexors, I can't make it the length of the pool. I'm like, you cannot make it the length. And he's like, my hip flexors are done. I can't, I can't. Which told me that in the movement of the kick, which was the weakness, the weakness within the weakness was the hip flexor. So what did we do? We had to improve the capacity of the hip flexor in order to fix the kick. It helped us identify the true weakness within his movement of swimming. And that's where a great athlete is, is that they're always assessing and trying to determine where is that opportunity. And so what do you do? You create workouts that help them build capacity. So what we would do is we would do like a tuck up and then what we would do high intensity and then the remainder of the minute was knees to chest active recovery slow five rounds five minutes eventually that turned into 10 toes to bar and then 10 slow knees to chest or no static isometric hold with the knees parallel and then he dropped down to the ground the remainder of the minute was very slow very slow knees to chest working hip flexor five rounds no rest and so part was, is that athletes, they don't know how to do what he just did. Mm. And it should be done on every single movement. Mm. And what makes CrossFit challenging is how many movements are out there, <laughs> right? That's yeah. why to be a champion now, it is really hard. It's really hard. You have to have the genetics, but you also have to have intelligence. You have to be able to figure out the puzzle because it's a math equation. Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear, like, comment, subscribe to the channel because we continue to bring you peak content on this channel. Obviously, you guys are here. You guys have watched the whole video. So like, comment, subscribe. All right. See you later.